All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. Let's now talk about the IMF and the loans that they're giving Kenyans. More than 200,000 people have signed an online petition saying stop loaning Kenyans. IMF has okayed the Kenya Eurobond plan as job cuts also loom in this project. They say it's a vicious cycle where the International Monetary Fund endorses a plan to borrow up to 508 billion shillings to repay other expensive loans as thousands of civil service and parastatal jobs face the axe in IMF's tough terms. Cherarge, is this administration overburdening Kenyans with loans? And this is including the deputy president and the president, Uru Kenyatta. Thank you, but you didn't allow me to, to respond to Tienda Mona. But uh, what I can just say briefly is that uh, he is forgetting that uh, in 2018, the president did issue executive order reassigning duties of coordination of cabinet and the executive role to Dr. Fred Matiangi, who is the minister of interior. So in short, the president was reassigning some of the duties that were supposed to be given to the deputy president. And uh, my brother, uh, at the end of Molo, should have these fresh images. The other day, President Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga who were walking around town launching projects. So the failures of Jubilee, by extension, ODM through handshake should also be part of it. To Dr. Mutua, I was just trying to profile him by bringing him to the national prominence by responding to his issues against the deputy president. So on the issue of uh, IMF loans, I would want to, to say this. I'm happy I'm among the seven senators who rejected and voted against the motion of public debt uh, raising ceiling. I think it was in 2019, 2018 there. I was among the seven, seven senators who we refused to vote against the uh, raising of public debt to $9 trillion. It is so sad. Uh, I saw the projection now is approaching more than $7 trillion in public debt. And my worry is that... Uh, the next president, uh, uh, and, and I've shared this with the deputy president, that uh, uh, unfortunately when he takes over power, God willing, and through the blessings of Kenyans, is that uh, the first issue will be how to address and restructure the public debt. So I think uh, I, I, throw the, I saw the IMF trying to respond, and uh, Kenyans were mad. They were over 200,000, is it? Kenyans who had signed petition online. I think the real issue is where is this money going? For example, there was money that was borrowed made for, for COVID. Uh, 244 billion there, about 7 billion only went to counties. And yet, as we talk today, we are discussing about the lack of oxygen, lack of uh, uh, how to prepare for this third wave uh, COVID uh, pandemic, how to caution uh, the, the vulnerable within the society. So I think the Kenyan public debt, and, and I agree, and I wish, uh, and I'm happy that the vice chair of jail, like uh, my brother Tienda Molo, is in the studio. That I would have expected them. I don't know whether they captured in BBI that the threshold of public debt should at least be a constitutional issue, so that we don't leave to few individuals who can uh, be be overreaching of the executive. The the parliament sits and uh, approves the, the 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 uncontrollable appetite of, of borrowing loans across the, the from many. It, we have commercial loans, we have from IMF, and everybody is, is, is and we wouldn't want to go into a route of where uh, we must, we, we can lose our strategic assets when we are not able to, to pay because we are being told we collect around 1.7 uh, trillion through revenue and we pay the same amount. And when you look at President Kibaki, where Governor Mutua was and then working with President Kibaki, yeah. there was a prudent use of borrowing money and prudent use of use. Now if the money is being borrowed. There is no significant uh, where you see that money that is being borrowed by President Uru Kenyatta's government. There is nothing that can be seen about it. And I think it is high time that the, the government becomes prudent and becomes yeah. careful in terms of borrowing and what is used for. Okay. So that we can know what are they using for. Are they borrowing for recurrent expenditure or yeah. for development expenditure? I All think right. that is what is very important. But, they, but finally, the, the public debt is not, is not good for the country because even the World Bank says... You don't borrow beyond 40% uh, of your GDP. Okay. Dr. Tiende? Uh, you know, <laughs> I didn't want to go back to this, but let me just clear it. Uh, because Senator Cheriga is also a lawyer. And as a lawyer, he, he should know that no executive order can ever supersede the Constitution. I read to him the provisions of the Constitution. Then he puts for me an executive order. <laughs> I mean, seriously, Senator Cheriga. But in any event, it makes my point. If you think you're the deputy president and all your powers have been taken, then what business do you have sitting there? Why don't you resign? Why are you earning money and using state resources and occupying the office of the deputy president? 
and in, indeed the residents, which then you use to host parties and all that. But secondly, Raila Molodinga is not in government by virtue of the constitution, by virtue of any legislation, or by virtue of any executive order. All that Raila has done is to extend his goodwill to the Jubilee administration for the betterment of the country and for future, not for history. But let's come back to where we were discussing before Cherigai takes us back to you know, issues we've covered. Cherigai starts by saying uh, President Uhuru's government should stop borrowing. President, I mean, please, let's. <laughs> there's only one administration, there's only one government. And right now, since 2013 to now, it is the Jubilee administration. So let those of us who have not quite been in Jubilee speak and shout louder. People like Senator Cherege should be very quiet because we've said these things for years and they've always rubbished it. They have no moral authority at all to even start all these campaigns of I don't know IMF and all these things. Just be quiet and hope that no one notices these things, Senator Cherege. One, since 2013 to now, we have raised the public debt from 1.7 trillion to 7.2 trillion. Just imagine those figures since 2013 to now. How does anyone in Jubilee try to segregate that part of that was before you know, the deputy president had power? But you cannot. It is a block. Two, the percentage of the debt to the GDP has significantly risen. It was high when President Moy was in power. I think by the time it, it, he left, it was about 60%. Kibaki's administration was able to bring it down, I think, to about 40%, if I'm not wrong. Yes. Now it is back to about 69%. I mean, that tells you there's a big problem. Thirdly, is that um, the question of borrowing is also about the terms of borrowing, the interest rates, the collaterals that are given. Some of the issues that have arisen is that some of the monies we borrow, we borrow with such dangerous terms uh, in terms of interest with collateral including state institutions and state-owned property. And that's very dangerous. Yeah. The other thing that is dangerous uh, about this arrangement is the constant raising of ceiling. As you know, um, only I think two year, one year ago, we raised the ceiling to nine trillion. And now there's an effort to raise it to 12 trillion, uh, but that is yet to come. Which means that what Kenyans are debating right now of these 255 billion from World Bank is nothing. It means there's a bigger arrangement to borrow that is coming. I think that no country can survive without borrowing. Yeah. But borrowing must be strategic in a number of ways. One is what is the purpose of the borrowing? Yeah. If you are borrowing, to finance recurrent expenditure, then there's a big problem. Because it means you're in a hole and you keep digging. Mm -hmm. If you are borrowing to finance infrastructure, which will then have benefits, then it makes a lot of sense. Okay. Our problem is that much of our borrowing is for recurrent expenditure. The second strategic problem is the openness. Yeah. Because borrowing is necessary, which means there must be openness in terms of the intention, in terms of why, and in terms of how it's done. Do you know part of the problem Kenyans are up in arms even now is that look at Eurobond, all the way back to Eurobond 1. Do you know the irony is that to date, and I think we are talking about six years, yeah. we have never had presentations of the audited accounts of Eurobond 1 with the issues that were raised. So I think Kenyans are outraged not so much that they do not want to borrow, but that the antecedents in terms of prior borrowing yeah. have not served those purposes. And this is my last point on this. We are coming back to an unfortunate scenario that uh, many of us had thought we left over 10 years ago. The idea that we must depend on the Bretton Woods institutions mm -hmm. to run our country. It's a very bad idea because it shows we are not progressing, we are retrogressing. Yeah. And as we are retrogressing, it comes with something else. A lot of times the Bretton Woods institutions have prescriptions for countries like Kenya which are not helpful to the country. You remember the structural adjustment programs, which caused massive job losses, and instead of helping the countries grow, yeah. and not just Kenya, they help the countries retrogress. Now, when you start hearing issues like, you know, the tax regime must be reviewed, probably raised, there might be job cuts, at a time that Kenya is being ravaged uh, with this COVID, yeah. 
it becomes very worrisome. Okay. So it is true that Kenya, like other countries, need support, yeah. especially because of the ravaging effect of COVID. But that support must be very carefully thought out, yeah. especially given the antecedents. Yeah, and that's my point there, Kim, oh, Dr. Wamatang. Yeah, we just simply being unfair to the government. We do need support, right? And this is what we are getting from the IMF right now. Yes, um, uh, Trevor, uh, I think it is, it, uh, my, my approach would be slightly different because I would rather uh, give a view that, yeah. that, that um, allows Kenyans to think out, de depending on where we are and where we, we tend to go, and probably try to support it with, 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 with facts as, as, as I know them. Um, uh, to begin with, let, let's make a few, uh, one or two points clear. You know, debt, I've said this before here, is debt. And debt, big or bad, is not good at all if it is not managed uh, properly. And, and uh, Trevor, if you run a small kiosk and you borrow 2,000 shillings, and you do not manage that 2,000 shillings, you can close your shop. Yeah. Actually, you can go to jail. If you owe somebody that money, yeah. you will be charged. So it doesn't matter. It's not the size of money. It is the management of the debt depending on what you're intending to do with it. And you see, we have made these points here before. One, uh, government has no any other source of income other than one, taxation, or then borrowing. Those two. Uh, that, that's how, how, how governments raise money. And, and so, if you find yourself uh, in that situation whereby uh, you, ha you, you are not able to tax your people, and, and remember, the times that we are talking about right now is the time when we are coming through globally as, 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 as the, the, the whole world, the economy, uh, having to deal with the uh, effects economically of uh, corona, the COVID-19 the COVID pandemic. Yeah. And, and uh, we don't need to go to the details of what has happened to the economy. Anyway, it is out there in the marketplace. But there are things that still must continue to be done. I mean, uh, hospitals must open. If a Kenyan goes to hospital, he has to find medicine. And uh, they have to be admitted to those hospitals. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, power must run. And, 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 and uh, all the other things that, that are done by government to give services to, to, to members of the public. So, so that reality first must be made plain to Kenyans, even yeah. as we come now to the nitty gritty of then why are we borrowing? Mm. And uh, what are we doing then with that money? Because I think that's the crux of the issue. Mm. If, if the money is borrowed and then it gets into an irresponsible system, then we have a big problem. And you know, Trevor, what happens, and uh, Kenyans would be happy to hear that, in my view, is that, that uh, governments also have two options when they find themselves in a hole. You can decide to print money mm. and, and, and throw it into the, into, into, into the economy. And if you print money, then what have you done to your economy? And you know, in this country, we have that history. There was a time when that happened to our economy. And you can remember the chaos. You can remember how our economy just went uh, crazy. Yeah. When, when, when money was printed. Yeah. So is it better to go through then that painful process and ensure that you are still within the guidelines that would help the economy recover at the time when uh, things start flowering up? And, and my view would be this, uh, Trevor, that um, what would have to say to government, uh, even as it is right now? And uh, the analogy by uh, doc Dr. Otende Amolo is quite correct in many ways, but only in one area that, that uh, he would need to have added. Yes, the debt has grown from 2013 up to now, but we didn't have the highways that we have today. You know, I mean, we, di we didn't have the bypasses that you see today. We didn't have the bypass in order We didn't have, the, you know, all the, these things that you've been seeing. We didn't have a, an improved airport. We didn't have the port developed and uh, Kilindini, Kilindini Harbor there and uh, Lamu port being built. All those things were not there. Now they, they are being done, and s that means that money has been consumed. My principal question will be, yeah. when we borrow this money, uh, what systems have we put in <coughs> to ensure that that money will go to ensure that the projects which are intended and yeah. were started to ensure that then they become of value to the economy are completed in time, that indeed what they were intended to do. For example, remember the ambitious plan of Lapset uh, and, and SGR and others. What are we going to do? What plans do we have in place to ensure that when that money comes, it will uh, uh, click with whatever has been uh, left pending, yeah. finalize those projects, <coughs> and make sure that within the shortest possible time that they start now to pay back into the economy, such that then things can start showing up. Yeah. I, I think that's, that, that's the main issue. And, and we have had two consistent problems, which we must own up to. First, we have had a big problem with corruption.
and, and, and uh, these Kenyans know. Uh, corruption has been a major issue in this country. <coughs> you borrow money, it is brought in. Once you sink it into the system, it, it, it leaks from every corner. From the, somebody is stealing from that corner, another one is stealing from another place, another one is uh, cutting deals elsewhere. And that is part of our biggest problem. Yeah. In fact, uh, though, <laughs> though, though, though uh, we, we, we decry the fact that uh, the World Bank and other those Bretton Woods institutions are lending to us now. One of the things we would even be asking ourselves, at least we would look ourselves, at ourselves and say, I mean, you mean they're looking at us again because there was a time they would not look at us because yeah. of how corrupt we, we, we have been. And, and if the trajectory is to ensure that first, that no single penny belonging to members of the public, to Kenyans, is stolen anymore, because th 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 this, this we have to deal with. Once, once you have locked that, then you know, even if you borrow a billion or a trillion, it has come to serve the people of Kenya, and it is in responsible hands. We can then talk about who is responsible for yeah. uh, management of that money into our, into our system to ensure that the, the debt does not become then uh, our, our lifeline. Yeah. Because, uh, Trevor, in basic economic thinking, yeah. you cannot manage and... and, 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 and uh, clear debts by borrowing more. Okay. You, you, you cannot use debt to, 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 to clear, to clear other debt. debts. Okay. And, and, and so my, my closing line on this would be, and uh, I know this is a matter of very huge interest to Kenyans, and that's why those 220,000 more Kenyans were petitioning. And, and I think, yes, uh, it may be out of misinformation, but it is a concern that Kenyans must raise. Yeah. When, we, when we borrow this money, when it is brought, it is, is it going to be used uh, responsibly? I would be saying to everybody, who has a responsibility in the current system right now is to ensure that once we get any penny, whether borrowed, whether yeah. paid through taxation, wh wh how, however we get it, when it is put in our system, let that money be for serving the people of this, uh, this, this republic. Okay. Uh, otherwise, that, that's the only way we are going to get yeah. ourselves out Dr. of the Mutua, you know, you are running for office, yes. and this will definitely be your problem. Mm -hmm. How would you deal with it? Let me, let me start by... Uh, let me start by, let me, let me tell Kenyans a little bit about economics. I'm going to be a bit long-winded here, forgive me, but I have uh, six points, and I'll make them chap-chap, as, as in my little chap-chap, very, very quick. First, I, I, before, so I agree with my colleagues yeah. and what they have said. Uh, I'm, I'm full support, even Cherengai, what you've said about the, the burden that we face. Yeah. But let's understand, um, I'm going to answer this using the, how, as journalists, you know, I'm a media practitioner, we are taught, we are taught to ask why, what, who, how, when, those questions. Let's first understand about the IMF. IMF is a Bretton Woods institution uh, together with the World Bank. And uh, it is a circle. So basically we put money into the IMF. <coughs> and the IMF gives us money when we need it. But it gives us money with conditionalities that ensure that that money is spent well. It is interest free. The money that we are getting is money we are getting that we are getting in three tranches yeah. in three years. So it's about 70 70 billion a year for three years. It's basically a rescue package. It means you're bleeding and you need some uh, rescue package. But it also sends a message to the rest of the world that this country can actually uh, borrow more, <coughs> that we're okay, that we are credit worthy. That is what is happening. Now, the IMF used to have very bad policies. We used to call them the, what Dactarius called the Structural Adjustment Program, the SAPs. In Zambia, they used to call strangling African people because they were made by technocrats sitting in Washington, D.C., with their biases and racism about what they thought about Africans and how we do things. And they made life very difficult for us. When we took over, and I'm saying we, when, when Kibaki took over the government that I served in, he <coughs> decided to change how things are done. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So it's good for people to understand that this loan is, yeah. is part of the one you're getting. Number two is that this country has a deficit. Many countries have a deficit. We have a deficit of about 800 billion shillings. And uh, that means that if we got 800 billion shillings given to us, PAP today, we'd be able to solve that problem. Uh, that's what we're dealing with. And we don't want to increase more of that debt every day, especially if it is going to <coughs> recurrent. Number three, anybody who's done, and this is why I think I can be a very good president, uh, because I understand economics. And we want a leader who understands economics. What are the solutions of... Uh, of a country that is facing problems. This also is called the fiscal policy. What uh, Matangi was talking about, you know, the lowering of taxations. You know, yeah. let's, in, let's widen the base like they do in Dubai. Let's not just tax, tax, tax people. As a president, <coughs> I would lower the taxes 
you know, we are strangling our Kenyans. Lower the taxes, remove bureaucracy, increase the base like they do in Dubai, like they do in Singapore, so that we have more people who are being taxed but at a very low uh, rate so that we go in. This issue of monetary policy, yeah. you know, how are we handling our finances, the supply side, uh, you know, policies that we have as a country, you know, looking about long-term productivity and some of those things. It's good for a leader to understand those concepts properly. It's not just about saying, I'll come and fix the economy. How do you fix the economy? You have to understand those issues. Now, there are different ways of, of improving uh, the economy, and that is uh, what what Matango is talking about. That is one is, is infrastructure development. That's what they did in the US after the World War II. We have to build infrastructure. Uh, Chirangai asked Mutua, what will you do? Sell your policies. Yes, that is why I've said that as a president, I will build 40 kilometers or 50 kilometers of tarmac roads in every constituency. You know, and I have, <coughs> it is possible. Those will create jobs. I'll build a factory. You know, in China, there's a factory in every village. In Kenya, I want to start with a factory in every constituency. Let us be the producers, let us be the manufacturing country for the rest of Africa so that things don't have to come from China, India to here. So we are exporting them to Rwanda, to Zambia, South Africa, Angola, everywhere from this country. That's yeah. how you revive an economy. And uh, I talked about uh, uh, tax cuts, and we have to find ways of uh, stimulating the economy, and you do that with deregulation. Let's have more privacy. Uh, you know, you see what the MF are saying that let's handle our issues pri properly. Yeah. You know, privatizing Kenya Airways and some of those things. And five, uh, you know, when I served under Mwai Kibaki uh, with the late Muraria, Muraria, we decided that we, we would not want uh, the foreigners to to come and give us money for a budget. We wanted to contact Kujitegemea. I even came up with a slogan that uh, KRA use, were using, Kulipa Ushuru ni Kujitegemea. You yeah. know, I wrote that in, in, in my office and as a government spokesman, and we, we publicized that. Yeah. And as a result, we converted donors into development partners. We told them, Tutajenga Thika Highway. You can come and help us, and uh, but we are planning to do it with our own money over 10 years. We yeah. could say, dear, maybe we'll do it in three years, but it is our program, and that's what we did. And so those are the things that I want to do when I become president, and that we need to think about, about the future leaders. Okay. Now, finally, what has caused these problems? Why, why are we in the hole that we're in? What are the problems, the microeconomic <coughs> policy problems that we are facing? One is environmental. We've got yeah. the COVID issue, but we've also got bad, bad politics. We choose our leaders badly. We choose our leaders uh, through tribalism. You don't choose the person who is sober who can lead for you. You choose the person who bribes you, you know, handout. That's an environmental problem that we have in African countries. The monopoly of the way we do things, you know, we are making life difficult. You see, Sulu is trying to expand. That's what she's trying to do, what we've done in this country. Yeah. We get rid of that monopoly. The inequality and poverty and then irrational behavior. What is, how do you go out there and say that you want to be president and your solutions are, are very <coughs> simplistic solutions, you know, and I'm not attacking people here. Yeah. And I think that William Ruto is trying with his hustler movement, with the wheelbarrow and all that, but I have not really seen real solid economic solutions that are really going to rescue our people, you know, in terms of lifting our people up because we don't want to get into recession. You talked about 69% economy. And now finally, yeah. all this adds up to one thing. We need a fresh way of thinking in this country. You look at all these alliances that are being formed, all these people are saying they're running for president, the old Kanu network and the others. Can they really give us a solution to the problems we have? We have kids staying at home who are already uh, qualified, but they yeah. have no jobs. Their siblings are about to finish school, and their brothers and sisters have no jobs, and they know they have no jobs. Our parents who are giving birth to our children are tired because they're sitting at home staring at their kids. Businesses are not doing well. Do you want the same people who've yeah. been running the economy, you know, uh, who've been there all over all these problems, <coughs> continuing running this country? No, we want something fresh. All right. And that is why I'm running for president. All right, let's bring in uh, Gerard Gay on this, and let's talk about <coughs> something else. Gerard Gay, I want us to talk about uh, um, the medical issue now. There's COVID-19 we're dealing with. The US and UK have given travel advisories against Kenya. But now I see counties are going to pay a further 1 billion shillings more for leasing project, the medical equipment scheme leasing project. That's on page 9 of the standard. We see now Treasury seeking approval of Parliament on cost variations that will see each county pay 153 million up from 132 million for the medical scheme. 
Now, this is an issue that is coming at a time when we realize that there's lack of oxygen, there's lack of beds, and there's some equipment that is still gathering dust. Uh, speak to those three issues. On the issue of COVID-19, this medical equipment scheme, and also the issue of equipment <coughs> in counties. Are we simply taking Kenyans for a ride? And you're that Senate, you're supposed to be oversighting this. Counties are now going to pay a further one billion shillings. <clears throat> Thank you, Trevor. On a lighter note, uh, Senator Kimani Wamatangi has done a wonderful presentation. But uh, maybe, he, maybe he's part of government. I don't know whether he reaches state house or the OP because those are good ideas that he should share with the government on real time so that it can assist the country. And, and I mean it very well. And uh, as the majority whip, we should have an unlimited access to president and share with those issues. Quick, quick, quick one uh, uh, before that one. Uh, uh, Governor uh, uh, Mutua, I did commend you last week for coming up with COVID uh, pandemic intervention. And I think uh, I still commend you for that because it is very important for your people of Machakos. Thank you. Thank and you. I hope the government will, will do the. You are asking uh, one sentence is what uh, <clears throat> the Hustler Nation led by William Bruta. Is there any economic concrete interventions? I, I want to. To confirm to you, my brother, that uh, Dr. William Bruta has always said bottom up approach where we will be allocating money just like CDF to SMEs or startup businesses to ensure we just fund. Those are just a snapshot of what I can uh, share with you at this point in time. But I hope in future, uh, when I host you for a cup of tea, we'll be able to take you blow by blow on what uh, the Hustler Nation bottom up uh, economy approach and you. Of course, you, we will be able to share a lot. Now, now find, on the issue of uh, medical equipment supplies, I think there is a health crisis in the country. Uh, and I want to pass my condolences to one of the uh, residents here in, uh, is in Nandi called Karen Toet, who lost her life because of lack of oxygen and lack of ICU beds at Kapsabet Referral Hospital. And uh, because she was trying to give birth, it was not a COVID case, but because of lack of oxygen and uh, ICU beds, we unfortunately lost a very young lady of just 23 years. And so it's sad. That is the, the sad reality that we are seeing on the ground. Uh, 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 I almost say, Mr. Speaker, sir, but Trevor, <laughs> what I can say at this point, <laughs> maybe in future, you never, there are good things. I, I, I know uh, Senator Kimani Wamatangi and uh, my brother, Dr. Tari, there, knows that we have been having push and pull especially through a uh, DORA bill, a uh, Division of Revenue bill, where we, in fact, I remember in the last financial year, we did withdraw the medical equipment supplies payment to zero. The National Assembly did went ahead and, and put back the money, yet, yet we, we have told, we have investigated as a Senate that the medical equipment supplies was an outright public rip -off of the money. And Governor Mutua will confirm to you that the money that has been paid by counties through medical equipment supplies is a, is a ripoff. When the report was presented by the special committee and the committee of health in the Senate, because you have asked what is Senate doing on this issue of medical equipment supplies, you go to a place like Tiati, you have all the equipments lying idle because of three-phase electricity. You many, many counties were paying for services, even reagents, even gloves, even syringes were being leased. And those were the issues that we expressed in salvation of the Senate. The report came to the floor of the Senate. When the Division of Revenue Bill came in 20, 2020, 2021 financial year, as a Senate, we did reject and put a zero there. But the National Assembly did go ahead and put back the money that are being used to fleece our counties. And it's very unfortunate that as a country, I think as a Senate, and I want to insist here, because you have asked, health is a devolved function. It is one of the critical functions that have been devolved. As a Senate, we have made our position known that the financing of medical equipment supply should stop forthwith. We don't no longer need to, 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 find, to, to finance because it is a public reform. This is one of, the, uh, one of the mega scandals that have been facilitated by the cartels that we see in Ministry of Health. Then this thing must stop. And I want to appeal to the National Assembly through the jailer vice chair, my brother, Dr. Tari, that they should also be in concurrent with the Senate that we no longer need to allocate more money or more funds to medical equipment supplies, yet it is a direct public report where the benefits to the counties are yet to be seen. Even as we discuss about the issue of uh, oxygen, uh, and availability of oxygen, even as we dis discuss about COVID pandemic, 
that is now overwhelming the public health care system. <coughs> and I think all this is very important going into the future. That uh, and, and finally, what I can say, Trevor, is that uh, the Ministry of Health and the cartels in Nairobi, the mafia cartels, as we are being called by the circles of media, yeah. is they are not keen on ensuring that uh, counties run a fully devolved healthy function. Because yeah. you remember even when the money came uh, for the, and, and maybe Governor Mutuo will confirm this, the Ministry of Health wanted to purchase the supplies and other necessary things to fight uh, non-pharmaceutical and non-pharmaceutical issues of COVID intervention. They wanted to purchase uh, the, through the Ministry of Health and then give it to the counties. Yet these governments, under the Constitution, they are mutual and distinct. They are supposed to exist in mutual and distinct where they have a symbiotic relationship yeah. where the national government does not in any way order the, the, the county governments. And, and I think uh, I'm told we might have a special sitting next week where a division of revenue bill will be considered by the Senate. Yeah. And I hope members of National Assembly will agree to us that more allocation to medical equipment supplies is a direct public report of our counties in terms of ensuring that we get affordable right. and accessible health care across our counties. All right, Dr. Tiende, it's the audacity for me. I mean, the Senator General Gay says this is a complete rip-off, but we're seeing Treasury seeking to raise this money even higher to <coughs> 1 billion shillings. Who is fooling who here on this medical equipment scheme leasing project? First, uh, Trevor, I had you to invite my colleague Chira Gay to comment about this leasing project and the COVID issues. Uh, uh, including the travel bans and all. So I want to take all of them at the same time. Yeah. Uh, let me start with the medical uh, issues. I agree with Senator Chirage that this medical leasing scheme is a scam. But it was a scam at inception. It is not a scam now. It was a scam as of 2015, when the Council of Governors opposed it, when uh, the opposition parties opposed it, when a lot of Kenyans raised very legitimate issues on it, but the administration chose to go ahead with it. And the problem, which is why I do not agree with this conclusion or the conclusions of Senate, is that therefore you can say you will stop allocating money to it. Once you allowed the scam at inception and their contracts are assigned lawfully, not allocating money to it is to add insult to injury. Those people will simply uh, using those contracts, which are also skewed, sue government for the original amount plus interest. So it's a scam where we are now all tied into it, and I agree with him because even we in the Public Accounts Committee went around the country in, in some of those places, and it, indeed we saw that these equipment were, you know, they were brought without looking at which county needs them. So there are some counties that were prepared and they are using those equipment very well. Mm. But there are some counties which are not prepared and the equipment are just lying there. You don't even know whether they will ever work all these years down the line. And that is a scam in it. So in my view, <clears throat> to uh, apportion blame, for example, to the current uh, uh, Treasury uh, CS, uh, on account of what is already in the contract that was signed six years ago, is to be escapist. We should invite the question of who conceived this in the first place? And who is this who enabled an increment from the initial 38 billion to 63 billion variation? And now another variation of 1 billion. So that we should hold people who are responsible, who are bestowed with that uh, honor on behalf of the people with either criminal consequences or administrative consequences, even as we look into that. And that really is what should happen. Because it's a very unfortunate uh, situation where we are burdening. And these are some of the things that lead us into borrowing. Because we take a lot of money, put into schemes which we are not even using. Those, some of those equipments are not generating anything. And yet we are paying money that we paid for them. But let me come to the COVID question, uh, which is my second comment. And I'll, I'll be brief on this. <coughs> um, let me focus on the US-UK travel ban. Mm. I think the travel advisories, I think it is outrageous. And quite honestly, it does not seem to be based on any rational thinking. It does not seem to be based on goodwill. It does not seem to be based on parity of nations. I think it is based on this idea that some of these states have, that there are some superior states and there are some inferior states. Let me give you an example. 
Let's just take the US. As we speak today, <clears throat> the rate of infection stands at 31 million, those who have been infected. The deaths start, stand at 559,000. And the rate of infection per 100,000 people is 170. In the UK, the total infection so far is 4.3 million. Death, 126,000. The rate of infection for every 100,000 is 190, which is very high. In Kenya, the total infection is 141,000. The death stand at 2,200. The rate of infection per 100,000 is only four. Four for 100,000 people, one of the lowest. How would you explain that a country with 190 per every 100, 170 per every 100, now issues a tribal adversary against a country with only four for every 100,000? Secondly, if you look at the UK, for example, UK has been ravaged by COVID. And all its neighboring countries in, in Europe have been heavily ravaged. And yet, there are no similar travel advisories. The UK, and this is my third point on this, has one of the more dangerous variants. In later years, in, in later, this last few weeks, we've had variants, the South African variant, the UK variant, the Brazilian variant, and some of these are the variants that are difficult to deal with. In fact, I was watching CNN this morning before I came here, and they were saying almost most of the infections right now in the US are the UK variant. Yeah. And the truth that even in Kenya, I think that this third wave, we have been affected two ways. We'd, we'd have been affected by the South African variant yeah. and the UK variant. And all this time, even when the UK variant was very dangerous and most countries were, were even stopping flights, Kenya did not stop those flights. Why would now the UK find it necessary to issue such restrictions? That is why I support fully the position taken by the government of Kenya yeah. on the basis of reciprocity. If they think that the openness with which Kenya has had ties with the UK is to be abused, if they think that only three weeks we signed the UK-Kenya uh, uh, trade agreement, which some people raised so, so many issues with, yeah. If they think that it is OK when so many Kenyans raised issues when the UK variant arose and asked, why don't we stop the UK troops that train in uh, Nanyuki from coming? But the government chose not to do that and chose to allow them to come. If they think that all these measures amount to nothing, then we must take similar measures. Okay. My last point is uh, on, um, again, on the vaccine, but specifically on the Sputnik vaccine. Yeah. And I had Cherry Guy saying that uh, he may have taken, I don't know whether he also took the Sputnik one. Uh, I want to loud the actions <laughs> taken by the government, specifically the Ministry of Health, yeah. uh, because I raised those issues here. I think th it's the right way to do it. They should have done it even much earlier, but it's never too late. The unfortunate thing, though, I've seen, I think, on page 10 of The Nation, yeah. that now the Law Society of Kenya <laughs> has sued the government for seeking to regulate importation of vaccines distribution of vaccines and all. And I think I'm a member of the Law Society, but uh, the president of the Law Society has just lost it. Section 4 of the Law Society Act <laughs> requires the Law Society to protect the public, especially in matters related to law. A move like this taken by government should be lauded. It should not be challenged. Okay. I laud the government on that one. All right. Wometangi, yes, if you uh, can cover on these two issues as well, really quick. <coughs> yeah, COVID I think uh, uh, UK Trevor, travel on, uh, and the scandal. Yes, on, 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 the, on, on the travel advisories, yeah. I, I, would, I would separate them. And uh, the one that the US is issued against our country uh, on two bases, one on, on terrorism and the other one on, on kidnappings. They, 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 they had separated them and, and, and told the citizens that they are most likely to either be kidnapped or be victims of terrorism in Kenya. That was one of the advisories. And it is on that specific one where I would take exception. Because um, it, I think it's, it's common knowledge uh, globally that uh, the rate of crime, uh, for example, in many parts of the US uh, is, is pretty high. Actually, it is very unsafe to, to walk in many areas, like even in New York. I mean, you can't go to the Bronx. 
in the U.S. And uh, so if it's about kidnappings and, and all that, I think we have a serious case. Not, not to say that we are, we are, we are squeaky clean, if yeah. you like. But um, I don't think that would be a basis right now, given even the, uh, our, our local records. Where, where I, would, I, I would differ, in, in, in my view, is, is on the question of how we have dealt with the COVID pandemic ourselves. And, yeah. and I would be asking myself, uh, Trevor, uh, honestly, as a Kenyan, yes, yes, the Trevor adversaries hurt us. But if you look at how the UK uh, government and especially the public in the UK, how, how they have taken uh, the COVID-19 protocols and what they are practicing on their streets and what we are doing, is, is there a comparison? Uh, is there a comparison? If, if Trevor and you do Kenyans a favor because you have the means to do that, you, you would screen the streets of the UK in London today, the whole day until evening, and Kenyans can see that when people have been told stay at home, they stay at home. When they're told to wear masks, they wear masks, everyone. When they are told that there is this restriction, don't go and, and mingle in bars and whatever, they don't go to, to, to those places. And, and uh, uh, I, yes, I, I agree with uh, Dr. Ari, uh, Otende Amolo on, on some of the numbers and figures is given. But, but you know, when you, when, when you give those numbers, Dr. Ari, they are correct, but they are correct compared to samples that are incomparable. Because here, how many people are we testing? What is our capacity? We are talking about those percentages as a percentage of 2,000 people tested in a population of 40 million. Yeah. Um, I mean, the capacity of the, U of, of the US and the UK to test their samples, as you've seen, in a day, they are, they are, they are talking about percentages against samples of 400,000 in a day. Half a million in a day, 300,000 in a day. Those are the people they are testing because it is mandatory, it is widespread everywhere where you go. You take a test, you have to, 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 to before you go into a, into a health center, before you go to a supermarket, and th those kind of things before you board a plane even locally. Yeah. And, and so they have the capacity to, 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 to bind their numbers. And so they will give more approximate, close, correct figures. Now, I do not think that we want to say to our people, Especially personally, I would say empirically, based on evidence. I've been up country, uh, you know, in Kiambu, in the other places, and you go to some places and you plead with our people. Yeah. I mean, what are you doing? You go to a shopping center and you find, even after this current lockdown, you're going to some centers and you're wondering, are we living in the, in the same country? Because you find people are still cl crammed in hotels. Everybody, Trevor, will tell you right now, go to Gekomba this morning and take photos and air them here tomorrow of what's happening in Gekomba. Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that's the attitude we have. And what we have to tell Kenyans is this is serious. People are starting to take this matter seriously when you have lost a relative, when you hear that your brother is gone or your, or your friend has died, whom, whom you, 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 you shared coffee with and, and your, your friends with. Yeah. So I, I do not want us to, uh, in my view, uh, give the impression that we have done well in managing yeah. uh, the, 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 the pandemic, we should do better. Okay. And, and I don't think any country that is observing and enforcing those kind of restrictions would be happy mm -hmm. uh, to entertain uh, entries from people who are also uh, treating it uh, you know, casually. Let us get serious about things we will overcome. Uh, COVID-19, we should be able to, uh, to, 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 to go to UK when yeah. it is safe, to go to the US when it is safe. We also okay. don't want to go there and get their variants. Okay. As, as, as Dr. Ali has said, I mean, why would we want to struggle there and get their variants, even, now, even if it is from one person, it's going to come here and spread. Yeah. But, uh, lastly, on this matter of mess, um, uh, mess means uh, medical, medical equipment, equipment scheme. uh, schemes. Yes. And uh, I'll just make two points. First, uh, uh, Trevor, I must say, ab initio, from the word go, the intention was good to bring the equipment. Because then, and we have, we have said this here before, yeah. if you wanted to go and take an X-ray in Turkana, you could not. You have to board a matatu or, or get whatever and go kilometers and kilometers to go and get a very basic medical service. I mean, even in major towns, like in Machakos, where uh, Dr. Dr. Mutua comes from, it would have been a big story before, before then. And, and that was the situation that was prevailing. Yeah. A noble thought was brought about and the equipment was brought, but the implementation is the one that was wanting. But the idea was very good. Because personally, as uh, Dr. Utenda Mol has done, I've also gone around uh, the whole country as a member of parliament with my committee to see. And you go to some places and you like what you see. 
because you will go to uh, a hospital in uh, in, in uh, West Pokot, yeah. and we were there, and you find that th that they can conduct uh, services that before would have never been offered to, to people, uh, and they've got modern equipment. The problem is, as you've uh, you've heard from. Uh, Dr. Otende Amolo, you go to some of those hospitals, you find that some of the equipment is put in warehouses, others they locked uh, in places, some of it was distributed to hospitals where there's even no electricity, there was no proper planning, those were the misdeeds and that is, that, that's the problem. But if that project was implemented properly, yeah. it would have helped the healthcare system of this country. Okay. We have had a, a, a long problem, a big problem. Yeah. I mean, remember our doctors were on strike the other day. I mean, we have been having a problem even with infections to the medical fraternity yeah. during uh, COVID. Okay. So, 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 so anything that is going to be done is being done that, that, that will improve the medical, uh, the healthcare se sector. Yeah. I believe it is a, it's a good move. Okay. The management is what has got to be looked at All and right. ensure that uh, the services that were, that were intended are, yeah. are, are rendered. Dr. Mutua, do these things work in the county? Uh, uh, yes, they do. And uh, I'll be quick, you know, uh, as because, you know, we are winding down. But uh, let me talk about it last. Huh? And I'll tell you, in Machako's launch, it works. Let me, let me just first say that uh, I'm a bit shocked. I saw a picture of a friend of mine in the newspapers, a man by the name Peter Cavilla. He used to be the deputy commissioner uh, of police and uh, retired commandant of National Police College, Kigando. Kiganjo. I've known him for many years. He was a county commander, the so-called, at that time. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Cavilla, very astute, bright man, gave his all to this country. Uh, I saw him in the newspapers. I SMSed IG Mutiambai, asked him what happened, and he told me it's COVID-related. We're losing people with COVID. COVID is a big problem. And uh, what Senator Matangia said is that we have to realize that other countries are putting even stronger measures. I saw uh, something from Ontario uh, in, in Canada. They have done, just gone on full of lockdown now. Yeah. You can't leave your house. You stay in. Because when it gets out of hand, it becomes a problem. These are the challenges that are facing many people. Here, when you tell people to lock down, it becomes a problem. Somebody once told me that uh, where I grew up here in Kangwara with a satellite, you find that there's a watchman who works during the day and a watchman who works at night. So, but they share the same bed, same house. So when you tell them to all stay at home, kuna shida. Because you'll find one comes in the evening as the other one is leaving. And they exchange. They share the same room because of the rate of poverty. So locking 100% cannot work. But taking the measures that we need to take. When vaccination comes, get vaccinated. Let's wear the masks. Let's, let's keep those measures. They work. They are scientific. Yeah. So that we don't just brush them. I was in, you know, uh, before this lockdown, I was, went to a different county and I was shocked. You know, I counted 10 out of 10 people not wearing masks. I think I only saw one border border guy wearing mask. Mm -hmm. So we are taking it for granted. And this thing is very serious. And that is why you see the world is panicking. I see people putting figures. People die from cancer, rock dark accidents and all this. But as Senator Matangi has said, as uh, Dr. Ria said, it's when it hits your home, that's when you realize there's a problem. So you don't have to wait for it to kill your brother, your mother, your friend, others, so that you, you take it very, very seriously. And it has caused a big problem in our economy. And I think it comes down to that. There's a lady called uh, Mama Lucy Meme, very good support of mine, of my law chap chap in Maua. And she's watching and she's told me that uh, the problem in, uh, of COVID in Maua is because now there's no money. Yeah. Because there's no exportation of Mira and all those problems. There's no money in circulation in our country. And that's tied to COVID. So the faster we can get out of the COVID problem and open our economy, the better it's going to be. You know, people are fully saying, talking yeah. about loans. I saw in the papers 1.2 billion shillings a day. Mm -hmm. What on a fuliza? Getting loans. Because yeah. we need loans to be able to, to survive. Somebody once said that times move slowly, but passes quickly. And this is a message that needs to be given to the UK and the US. I don't want to go back to what uh, Moshimiwa has talked about. Yeah. But And they're doing this to us because, I mean, for, come on. There's a UK variant. You've not heard of a Kenyan variant. Yeah. You look at the number of people dying and they may say, oh, Kenya is not testing enough. But it's not the testing that actually shows you the COVID problem. It's the number of deaths, the number of challenges. Our health system has not collapsed yeah. as it has done in other places. They did in New York. 
as it did nearly did in the UK. We, we are not barring people in every village every day so that you say we've got hidden figures of COVID, so but people are dying in droves. No, you know, it is not, it is back to that racist and perspective they've always had about the continent of Africa. Yeah. In the beginning, they say that Africans would all die like flies. You know, I want to tell them time moves slowly, but passes quickly. Yeah. You know, they are thinking that by putting restrictions on us, they're sending a message that we are the diseased ones. We had to say they are the ones who are diseased. And the, what we are suffering today in Kenya did not come from here. It actually came from them. And they're the ones who are giving us a variant. So they need to treat us with a sense of respect. Yeah. They need to know that we are equal partners when we deal. And even when they talk about down upon you would think that they're the main or trading partners. I've heard people say, oh, don't touch the UK. Yes, the UK is very important to us. And I respect them. And I think that we have very good relations with them. But uh, they need to realize that uh, Uganda is our biggest trading partner. If Uganda shuts its border today, the economy of Kenya collapses, not the UK. UK can, can severe trade partners, uh, trading uh, links with us. But if Uganda and Tanzania shut their borders with Kenya today, our economy collapses. And that's the truth. Because it's Uganda. It's Pakistan who import our, our, our tea. It is uh, US has a good trading because of Agoa and yes. the things we did. It's Netherlands with the flowers. And then now you find the UK and other countries. Even importation, where do we get majority of our goods from that sustain our industry, our construction industry? It is China, it is India, it is Saudi Arabia, it is the UAE, it yeah. is Japan. It is not the UK. So the, we need also to enlighten our people that yes, they colonized us, they were yeah. colonial masters for a long time, but we also need to say that we need to be free of mental colonization. Yeah. That if they do it to us, we can also do it to them. They need to give us respect so that we can respect them. They are our friends, we trade with them. But that's not how they treat us. I don't want to go to the UK to do what? It's cold there. You know, it's, it's blizzard there. They have COVID everywhere in the UK. You know, I, I'm safer in Kenya. Yeah. You know, I'm much safer in Kenya. <laughs> okay. So, you know, so they need to realize that even us, we know how the world operates. And just because yeah. our people have been told they are, they are not as rich as they are, yeah. that they can treat us the way they yeah. want. Uh, and about the equipment, you know, uh, somebody once said that uh, this MES or mess equipment is a mess. But I agree with uh, Dr. Uh, our Dr. Senior Counsel here that, uh, yes, it was bad at the beginning, but it is not as bad now. And Machakos was the first county, you know, Uhuru Kenyatta came there with William Ruto, and we launched the equipment in Machakos, and they have made a difference. People used to die in Nairobi waiting to get uh, kidney, you know, dialysis. Uh, dialysis. Yeah. Now they do it in Machakos. You know, people, they have enabled us, you know, we've got the theaters, now we, we're able to do things. And, so some counties like ours, we took advantage of them and expanded. Yeah. Because of those equipment, I was able to set up the only cancer center uh, by a county all over the country. And so I've got the Machakos Cancer Center because now I was able to build a better lab because yeah. that equipment helped me a little bit. I put more money. I was able to build my oxygen plant. I was able to do other things because they helped me. And then I took advantage of that now to help my people. Yeah. And also enabled me now to provide universal health care. Because Trevor, as you know, uh, you know, we don't want here where we've got, uh, you know, uh, uh, in it or when COVID uh, vaccination, your dosi, you know, maskini treatment, your dosi, in maskini with this COVID era, treatment in Machakos, you're carried by ambulance, you're treated, you can sleep in hospital, yeah. uh, you can be uh, done uh, all the tests you need, everything that is done to you in Machakos, yeah. uh, admission. Cancer treatment, even up to 50 million shillings, mm. it is free of charge. So it is not all Be doom and gloom. No, it is free of charge why. because I, I took advantage of this equipment. It yeah. gave me the 10 percent that enabled me to build the 90 percent. So it depends on how each county looked at it. Okay. In Machakos, it is a success. Yeah. And our health care, I dare say, is the best in this country because that equipment gave me hands up okay. and I was able to take advantage so of it. So you don't mind pushing this from 132 to 153 million? No, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm, I don't mind. Yeah. I'm just saying that the equipment helped me. But when it comes to the process of how it was done, like uh, what has been said, is a problem. The okay. implementation has been said is a problem. And it comes down to one thing, and that is greed. Okay. In Kenya, we are greedy. We get an opportunity to steal. We steal. And that's a problem, and that's what we need to arrest in terms of governance. Okay. Even this loan we are getting from the IMF, one of the conditionalities is governance, is the issue of theft, yeah. because people still left, right, and center. Okay. And that's a main challenge we face in this country. Right. And we need a leader 
who can arrest those problems. Okay. I'll give you a chance for closing remarks, starting with Gerard Gay, really quick, and uh, then I hope uh, uh, Otiende Amolo will talk about this knee twist in ODM search for flag bearer. This is your closing remarks. <laughs> Gerard Gay, you had mentioned earlier on that you don't want a race where Raila is not there because you think <coughs> that contest would not be fun. Do you still stand by those words? Because at first they said it was an <laughs> April Fool's Day conversation. Now it's like it's turning out that there's an extension to this flag bearer of ODM as you make your closing remarks as well. Uh, thank you, uh, Trevor. But, but quick one on the travel ban is that I remember when the first wave of COVID began, uh, President Uru Kenyatta government did send two billion, I think two billion watt of flowers. So UK is behaving like a jilted lover. I don't know why. Uh, but I, I, I yesterday I watched JKL live uh, in Citizen, where the PS in charge of foreign affairs, Ambassador Masharia Kamau, was saying that uh, maybe the reason that he was disappointed, and I was happy, uh, PS Masharia Kamau did know that they have talks with the uh, UK ambassador on the East standoff, and uh, we hope for the best. And although he did express that the government is disappointed with the decision that has been made. But uh, one, of the, one of the curious comments in MED is said that uh, maybe the reason U.S. and U.K. issued travel advisory, uh, 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 advisories is because uh, those societies are so litigious, and therefore maybe the government was protecting itself from such, uh, such litigations that, that that society comes from. Uh, and I hope the, 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 the relationship will go back where it was uh, so that... Uh, we can continue to partner for the <coughs> economy, for the prosperity of, of, of all of our countries. Uh, so, secondly, on the issue of, yes, I, I said last week, and I remember my brother, senior counsel, Otienda Amoro, did say that um, what SG uh, uh, said that it was an April full day, Fool's Day was that uh, Raila Odinga will not be in the race. He could not confirm whether Tinga will be in the race or not. But I want to still insist that uh, Raila Odinga will always spice up the Kenyan politics. And now that I've seen in the headline that, that uh, the National Executive Council of ODM might be called, I'm not a member of ODM, maybe my brother will confirm later, that they have called maybe of extending and having uh, more time for presidential candidates. All of us, even every Kenyan that you get anywhere, have always known that Raila Odinga will run for presidency in 2022. And just like one Kenya alliance or the Saralak babies, uh, Saralak alliance, he will always want endorsement of President Uru Kenyatta, as you saw last week. We, we were, uh, for the last few weeks, there have been speculation when Baba was recovering from COVID that the relationship between him and uh, Uru Kenyatta has uh, had disintegrated. But when we saw them uh, launching projects within Nairobi, it shows that uh, ODM is still in the issue of endorsement. You remember when you were in studio, uh, Otienda Amolo did indicate that there is no problem with endorsement. So it means that Baba must run and get the endorsement. But, but all this boils up to what we need to do is that if Tinga will run, uh, we want him to spice the politics and it will be a worthy opponent to, to go against. And uh, we wish him well. We wish him quick recovery. Yeah. We wish him to see him on the ballot so that we can. Finally, is that uh, to appeal to Kenyans that uh, let us take these COVID issues uh, seriously, like especially in our villages. There's still a lot of laxity. I yep. think uh, we still need to social distance and mask up. And, uh, and I can see Wamatangi and, uh, and Governor Mutua are too close. <laughs> they should be told to maintain also social distance in the studio. It's more than uh, one meter, Terangi. It's, 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 it's more than one meter. Then, it, then it is OK, because <laughs> one of them wants to be the running mate of the other. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we want to wish them well. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. All right. <laughs> Dr. Tiende, this is why Senator Cherege should come to studio. <laughs> you see, his TV must be very small. <laughs> or maybe he's using, <laughs> or maybe he's using a, small, a small iPad or laptop. So <laughs> the image. Yes, don't look the way <laughs> they are. They look very close. My brothers here are maintaining a very safe distance. Um, first, about ODM. Let me say that uh, we all know that when and if Raila Molodinga decides to run for president, no one can stop him. No to an ODM, nowhere else. So that's just how it is. But Raila has always been very clear that he wants this BBI process to come to culmination, then he will make that decision. The truth is, this BBI has more or less is in its tail end. Because where it is, reggae is not stoppable. Uh, the challenge was at the county stage. 
Yeah. Now it's in parliament, and as you had, you know, we can convene any time, and then it goes into referendum, save all other challenges. Um, but secondly, it must also be noted that the, so, the deadlines that were placed by our National Elections Board, they were just demonstrations of democracy within the party. They were self, and they are self-imposed deadlines. They are not required by any law. In fact, the only law that has any provisions is Section 13 of the Elections Act, which requires nomination that you give the names of the candidates nominated 45 days to the election. So we have in excess of 15 months to do whatever we want. And so in the meantime, for me, it's not a big deal whether the deadline is closed, whether it's reopened or closed again or reopened, because those are exercises of internal democracy. There's really not anything that would stop them. Indeed, you also knew that we had initially wanted to do you know, the grassroots elections, and then COVID came. So even those deadlines have had to be adjusted. So for me, the fact that it came on 1st April, and uh, our SG clearly stated that it was an April uh, uh, prank. Uh, well, personally, I would not have pulled such a prank, but he chose to pull it. Just the way the others who pulled, I saw that prank, and I almost believed it when they were saying President Obama and the wife and the daughters were coming, because it was, that's a very sad and emotive thing. So I actually honestly believed that that was happening, only to learn that it was an April Fool's uh, prank day. But I must warn people, you know, uh, especially the media, do you know this idea of 1st April Fool's Day is just a social thing, it's not a legal thing. If you say anything that has legal <laughs> consequences, then you say it was an April Fool's prank, let me tell you, you'll be in for it, because the law does not recognize any such thing. In closing, let me agree with my colleagues. We really, really need to tolerate, to be tolerant to the government in terms of the measures that they are taking in this COVID. We really need also to emphasize to, ourself, to our people as leaders, to ourselves as individuals, that this third wave is very dangerous. Let's warn Kenyans that unlike the first and second wave, where you would hear someone had COVID, you know, they're in hospital, even oxygen was not needed. This third wave is dangerous. My friend and village mate, the late Alois Opia, God rest his soul in peace, only fell in on Saturday. By Monday, he was gone, confirmed COVID. And that's how people, just this morning as I was walking in, another of my constituent tells me uh, she lost the father. The mother went to hospital. The mother did not come out of hospital. He's also in ICU in all less than five days. Let us accept that this COVID is real. Let us take all the precautions that we can take. Otherwise, we will be in this for a very long time. OK. All right, Momotang, very briefly, closing remarks. Thank you. I think um, first, I know when uh, we start exchanging notes with, with uh, Dr. Tienda Molo, it, it tends to lengthen. But uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> when, <laughs> when it gets to the subject of Baba, he, he sometimes finds himself in a very tight spot. Yeah. Uh, but uh, my only simple advice would be to ask him to go and uh, pass a message to the SG of ODM. That, uh, that, that, that kind of joke is called a bad joke. Yeah. And, uh, and he should not uh, even think of pulling it next year when it will be a few <laughs> months to the, <laughs> to the election date on April Fool's Day. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, you know, uh, you, you, don't, you don't pull that kind of prank uh, about the election of a candidate who is supposed to be among us, the top two candidates in, uh, who will be running for, uh, for president in this country. Otherwise, he may look like he's a joke himself. So, so I, th I think um, uh, that, that was a, a bad one. But however, uh, Trevor, Otende Amolo and, and Pate are not telling us that the rest of all these other talk is really going through the motions. You know, they have to uh, tweet us to all these uh, show, you know, <laughs> while we know that uh, the boss will be running <laughs> for, for, for the position. <laughs> and I would guess, actually, whether, you know, there's this thing that is called launching of, of, of candidature. Probably they must have rethought and said, now if you start announcing now, and you must have serious pomp, you must have uh, fireworks, <laughs> you know, there has to be a big occasion. Wait for when the others are launching, because, you know, in, in the political maneuvering arena, 
if you go and uh, launch yourself too early and people get too, too used to a candidature, then uh, those who come after you may steal the show. So I believe yeah. those are some of the uh, you know, informants of, of their, their move. But however, their, their candidate has been in this field for, for long and people already know that he'll be running. So the earlier he starts warming up, really, yeah. the better. You know, so that when the, <laughs> the, 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 the shot is fired, then he'll be, he'll be in motion. Yeah. Lastly, on, on, on COVID, I hope, I hope, I truly would do my best uh, in every way I can uh, to sensitize, agitate yeah. that uh, COVID becomes a learning experience for us as a country. And it will ignite a fire in us, and especially in the medical fraternity, that we need to find homegrown solutions. I've been repeating this uh, many times uh, yeah. here, uh, Trevor, because if you looked at the dailies today, for example, on the case of HIV AIDS, you know, there was a report there that was saying, even today, Kenya cannot test it for itself. We don't have the capacity to test for viral load mm -hmm. of, 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 of HIV, a pandemic that has been with us for 30 years. Now, uh, that's what I'm saying, that um, if, if we wait, and, and I don't know whether we, we got the opportunity to discuss this, but, but Trevor, I, I believe verily myself that, that, that COVID did, is not something that just came the other day. Remember, there were days when we had uh, these uh, bad flu from China, and people used to be banned from coming uh, here from China because they had bad flu. Mm. Then it, it, it mutated into something else they were calling, calling SARS. And every time when you went to China, they would come and stop you in Hong Kong and other places and tell you that there's an infection in China mm -hmm. that uh, is uh, to do with breathing uh, complications uh, that they were calling then SARS. And that came to SARS too, and then uh, COVID. Yeah. And this could have been, in my thinking, uh, a virus that has been mutating continuously until it has gotten to this lethal stage. Mm -hmm. You, know, you never know. It could be mutate and maybe reemerge another 15, 20 years. We don't want to find ourselves uh, or to be caught with our pants down again as a mm. country mm. when these things ca 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 come. And we have to, by then, maybe with a population of, of 80 million or 100 million people, yeah. still go stretching our hands begging for people to come to our aid to give us vaccines, to come and uh, show us the solutions, tell us what's, what's killing us. Uh, you also saw in uh, one of the dailies, and I think we missed that, that in one of the small uh, areas in, uh, I think, in Western, there is a strange disease that's killing men. I yeah. think it's, it's, in, it's in today's paper yeah. that, that uh, men have just been uh, itching, scratching, swelling a bit, they die. It was associated and with some alcohol intake, illegal so, alcohol. So, so, so anyway, uh, what I'm saying is this, that uh, yeah. it is important that, that, that we start owning our own processes and ensure that we can have our own solutions as a country, especially yeah. medically. Okay. I've agitated for long, uh, Trevor. Let us strengthen our research institutions, yeah. our universities, yeah. uh, uh, the other research, research institutions like Cambry, mm -hmm. and give them the means that that is possible for them to start carrying out what we need, and then we can be self-reliant. All right. Thank you. Dr. Mutua? I'll be very quick. Uh, uh, thank you. I want to, first of all, commend my uh, panelists today. Uh, thank you, Trevor, for really guiding us very well. Uh, Senator Rangani, Wamatangi, uh, Otiendo Molo. And uh, I have to say I'm very impressed today with Matangi. Or Matangi. You know, I've said that uh, he's making a lot of sense. I don't know, <laughs> but it's, it's earning you very good points. You know, <laughs> we, 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 <laughs> oh, oh, in, in, in our race for, for the president. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think you, you, you can be a, you can be a, very, a very good be partner. He wants to be a very good partner. He wants to be a running mate. Yeah, yeah, very good partner as we, as we change this country. Uh, first of all, is to send my condolences to the many people who've lost their relatives due, due to COVID. And we know that quite a number of people have died. In Machakos, we have now given a, an order that all people who die, regardless of whether you've died at home or in, otherwise, you have to be tested, whether the body of the deceased, whether that person had COVID. Because we want to, to know how many people have died as a result of COVID, so that people are not just buried in Alkwanoma na Kichwa, Homa Kidogo, Mgui, Mumia, so that we know. Uh, my condolences to the uh, family of Peter Kavila. It's very personal to me. He's a very good uh, senior police officer in this country, retired. So my condolences to his family. Now, we, I want to congratulate uh, President Suluhu. And the main thing about President Suluhu is that nobody asks us what tribe does she come from? What was her base? Base yake likuwa gani? You know, kabila lako, your base, unanzia na kabila gani ndiyo base yako. It doesn't work like that in Tanzania. Jaka kikwete my good friend, I asked him one time what tribe comes from Akacheka sana. Because he comes from a very, very small uh, ethnic group. In Kenya, unambiwa, 
you need a big group. Where is your base? Go solidify your tribal base. We become like wild animals being guided by this tribal instinct. We need to break away from that. So I congratulate, congratulate her and I hope that one of these days soon as I now tour the region, as I talk to other leaders about my presidential ambitions, I'll be able to meet her in Tanzania or another place and talk to her. I'm impressed by what she's done and I encourage her to keep on to that spirit. Kenyans are really, really impressed. Yeah. Number two is that uh, there's this talked about bottom-up uh, system, SMEs and everything, but we want a country not a bottom man's approach that is about handouts. We want empowerment. Our young people do not want to be given a fish. Young people in Kenya want to be given doano. You know, they go and fish for themselves. This thing of handouts, handout this, shika he, shika he, shika he, kimbia harambe hapa, harambe hapa. The handout culture is not a good economic policy. You know, it's a very, very bad economic policy. So I hope that's not what Chenangai was talking about, the bottoms up. You know, our SMEs need, we just need to unlock the bureaucracy and help our people. We have the solutions. I want also uh, to talk about the presidency. And I want to say that we owe a lot to Ray Lodinga. Ray Lodinga has really done a lot for our country. Yeah. He's really uh, opened up the, the democratic space and everything. And he has every right to vie for presidency. He's struggled and everything. But it's also good to point out, even with these coalitions, that uh, the presidency in this country is not set aside for one or two or three people. It's not about horses and mules and all those things. Any child born of this country can aspire to be president, whether male or female, regardless of ethnic background. Yeah. And we need to realize that there are more people in this country who can rule. It's not just a few who have been there. And that is why some of us are sticking our necks out to say we are the better choice for this country. Yep. And we have to send that message that this Kenya, haina wenyewe, it's not for a few people. And lastly, is to tell our people we choose wisely, but to say that, you know, we bash our country a lot. Mm. We're going through a difficult time. And, uh, you know, um, I, there are a lot of problems that we see in the Huru and Ruto government. There are many challenges we've seen due to COVID and others. But at the end of the day, we have a great country. We need to stand together as a country. You know, I remember when we were young, we used to see stories whereby two brothers are fighting. When another person comes to beat one brother, they stop fighting, they beat up that one because took up a moja. You know, when it comes to countries like the UK and US, we need to be able to stand as a country. At times, Kenyans, we like putting ourselves down. We have to realize that this is a great country. Yeah. It's a beautiful country. I've traveled around this world. Other countries are not as beautiful as this country. We come from a blessed country. Yeah. God loves us. And at times we put down our country. Let's also lift our country. Even okay. as we criticize it, let's lift up our country and yeah. appreciate what we have. All right. And uh, to say that at the end, you say, Tafadhali, tujichunga na COVID ni baya, ni kubaya. Let us know that uh, they are going through difficult times, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Let us not give up hope. All right. Brilliant. Let's bring up some of your feedback real quick on this. Let's bring up the first one here. There's a lot coming through. We might not be able to read all of them but we will try and squeeze in the few we can. Ani Sarai says, President Sulu is what Tanzania and East Africa needed. I feel like it's the beginning of change for Tanzania. Can't wait to see where Tanzania will be at in a few years to come. All right, let's see what else you're saying. Jenga Wakungu says, our constitution is very supreme. Any gender is viable for presidency so long as one is legally a Kenyan. I would love a situation where Kenya has a feminine president. I believe you meant female president. We need to change our attitude and perspective as Kenyans and pave way for a female president. All right, let's see what else you're saying. Sir Rawlings says, it's sad and unfortunate that even at the heat of COVID-19 pandemic, outright theft of public resources, massive loans, Kenyans can't find a common political ground to say no to all these and take Kenya to a new trajectory for a common good. All right. Jacob Abere says, there is this problem of voters voting using our people mentality without evaluating one on leadership plus management skills. Now it's payback time of corruption bonanza and debt burdening on wounded economy and social livelihoods. Samato says, uh, for Enterprise Kenya, it is not about the gender of a leader. It is about whether they are well-meaning, competent, and firm enough to shrug off and resist deep interest and influence of the greedy deep state cartels. Jenga Okung again says, when COVID-19 initially struck, we saw the government mobilize billions of funds from the parastatals, and this was really helpful to the economy. Why can't we do the same to help us embark on a freedom from debt and live within 
our own means. All right, thank you so much to my guest in studio, Dr. Kimani Wamatangi, Kiambu Senate and Majority Whip, Dr. Tienda Molo, Member of Parliament for Arieda, Dr. Alfred Mutua, Governor for Machakos, and Honorable Samson Cherargei, Nandi Senator. We do this again next Thursday. This has been the State of the Nation where we talk about all matters affecting you, and we appreciate all your feedback. Taking a quick break on Daybreak. When you come back, it's time for cooking tips. See you in a bit.